I mean, the rise of China is enormous, not just for the U.S., but obviously for the world as a whole, right? I mean, you have a country that about 20 years ago, um, 30 years ago, China's GDP was about the same as Spain's. Now it's the world's second largest economy and could potentially be the world's largest economy maybe within 15 years or so. Th this is enormously important. Now, what we're focused on in... I think in this particular election, to a greater degree, is the extent to which the rise of China may have come at the expense of some elements of the U.S. polity, particularly kind of the semi-skilled working class as jobs have migrated to um, not just to China, but to many other parts of the world. Broadly speaking, I mean, the fact that China has grown and grown so fast has been very positive, I think, for humanity as a whole, first and foremost, because you've had um, 600 million people in China lifted out of poverty, which is a massive human achievement. Secondly, China's, the spillover from Chinese growth uh, have helped other countries as well um, by turning around uh, what was a long depressed cycle in commodities. Not every commodity exporter used that necessarily as well as they could have or should have, uh, but um, those were positive spillovers from Chinese growth that had a positive impact on, um, on, on, on incomes and wealth in places like Brazil and places like South Africa. To what extent these can be retained or, um, you know, as, as as the Chinese growth path changes is something that remains to be seen, but I think overall it's been very, very positive. I think it's, a part of it is just uh, explaining the numbers, right? I mean, you have an economy that is now so large that what happens there uh, will affect U.S. companies that trade with China. It will also affect Brazil, it will affect Germany, it will affect Japan. It will affect a large number of countries that we think of as more friendly than in some ways we think about the United States. There's a lot of focus on our geopolitical antagonisms in the, uh, in the South China Sea, for instance. The point is that notwithstanding these geopolitical antagonisms, the world economy is now so finely intertwined, global trade flows are so large, global financial flows are so large, that what happens in the world's second largest economy is, and the world's largest trader, is almost certain to affect what happens in the world's largest economy either directly or by the domino effect it has on other economies. So I think you know, it's important to recognize that China is now so big that whether it succeeds or it fails, um, you know, matters enormously to the United States. So kind of rooting for uh, one outcome or another or trying to push things in one direction or another, it doesn't seem to me it makes a whole lot of sense precisely because the spillovers and the spillbacks are so massive.